In this video, we're going to get the basic engine set up. It will involve creating a window and getting some basic graphics and particles set up. Left clicking and dragging draws the selected material, which in this case happens to be this solid purple material. Right clicking and dragging erases. There are two different materials which can be selected using the number keys. The first one is the solid material that I just showed you, and the second is a powder like material that falls under the force of gravity. In addition, you can also change the size of the brush with the plus and minus keys. So the first thing we're going to need to do is come up with the overall structure of the program. And there's not going to be one exact way to do this, but we're going to have to pick something that not only makes sense, but is clear and easy to understand. Every program needs an entry point, and in C++, that's the in main function. While there are many spots that could be placed, a good practice is to create a main.cpp file. The reason is, it makes it really easy to find. And this becomes more and more helpful as the program gets bigger and bigger, and there's more classes for it to hide in. In addition to the program entry point, SDL will be set up here too. This will involve initializing it, creating a window, and some other related code as well. The main.cpp file is also going to create an instance of the game class. The main purpose of the game class is to connect everything together. It's essentially the central hub of the program. Eventually, when the entire game is finished, it will end up creating instances of updating and drawing the terrain, unit, etc. It will also contain the main game loop. To explain what this is, it's important to understand how a game works. A game is a lot like a video, except it allows the player to interact with it in real time. The way a video works is that there are a bunch of images that get played very quickly one after another. And this is what gives the perception of motion. As an example, imagine a video that runs at 60 frames per second. That's 60 images shown every second, lasting 1 60th of a second each. A game running at 60 frames per second incorporates mouse and keyboard input to generate a new image every 1 60th of a second in real time, and that's what allows the player to interact with it. To achieve this, the main game loop will constantly loop through code on a timer to handle all the inputs, update everything, and draw the entire game. The first class that the game class will connect with is the train class. The train class will store and update the particles and materials. It will also contain the particle data for the entire world and have any functions needed to update and draw them on the pixel level. So now we're going to start coding the game. And as planned, we're going to create a main.cpp file. So just go over here to source files, right click, add, new item and make sure that cpp file is selected. And we're going to rename it from source to main.cpp. Then just click add. And I'm just going to pin the file here. So what we want to do is start by creating the most basic program possible. And in order to do that, we're going to start by initializing SDL. So what I'm going to do is head over to the SDL wiki. And to get here, just type in the following link. In this case, there's SDL init after the slash, because we're going to be looking at that particular function. Alternatively, you could type SDL init, or whatever function you're looking for in your favorite search engine, and one of the first few links should bring you to this page. So the SDL wiki is quite handy for looking up information on different functions and features that SDL has. It tells you what each function does, what the inputs and outputs are, some other important information as well, and in many cases, there's some example code that can really help you understand how to incorporate the function into your program. So for SDL init, we know that it's going to initialize the SDL library. As an input, it's going to require some kind of a flag or flags. It's going to output an int. And the return value, it says return zero on success or negative error code on failure. Call SDL get error. For more information. So we know we're going to have to check the output value to determine whether it was successful or not. So this means we'll likely have to call this function up in an if statement and check if the output value is negative or not. 
If it's negative, we're going to have to output some kind of an error message that will include the SDL get error function. And in the remarks section, there's a whole bunch more information that you can read over yourself. But what I really want to focus on is the code example below here. So you can see that in this case, they start by including SDL. From there, they create an int main function. And notice that it contains the following code. I know that C++ programs often just have int main, open bracket, close bracket. But for SDL, it has to be written like this, or it won't work. From there, they have the SDL init function. And in this example, it contains two flags, SDL init video and SDL init audio. For now, we'll just focus on SDL init video. So that's the only flag that we'll need. From there, they check the output. If it's non-zero, then they output an error message to the console, and they include the SDL get error function. And in addition, they return a value of 1 to not only stop the program, but indicate that it's failed, which of course is standard C++. So if SDL was successful, the rest of the code for the program would go here, but for now we'll just keep it empty. From there, the program will eventually have to quit, and it's always important to clean up. So to do that, the SDL quit function needs to be called up. And finally, they return a value of 0 to indicate that the program has been successful which of course is standard C++ as well. Now let's go back to the main.cpp file in Visual Studio. Let's start by including IO stream. This will allow us to output to the console. Next, we're going to include SDL. And note the difference from the example code. I've written it as SDL slash SDL.h. And the reason is because we placed all the files into a folder called SDL2. And the reason why we did that was to be tidy. So while in this case we only have the one library, it's not really a big deal. But as soon as there's more than one library, especially when there's lots of files like with SDL, it's nice to put each library in their own separate folder to avoid confusion. Next, we're going to need the in main function. And I'm going to write it just as the example specifies. We're then going to call up the SDL init function with the input flag SDL init video. And then we're going to check if the output is smaller than zero. If that's the case, then we're going to output an error message, and it's going to include the SDL get error function. After that, we're going to return one to not only stop the program, but indicate that it wasn't successful. Otherwise, we're going to output a message that says success. From there, we're going to need to call up the SDL quit function. And finally, we're going to return zero to indicate that the program has been successful. Let's hit run and see what happens. All right, looks good. The next thing we're going to do is create a window. So we're going to have a pointer of type SDL window, and we're going to call it window. It's going to call up the SDL create window function. And the first input is a title. So we're going to call it falling sand platformer game. The next input is for the position in the x direction. So we're just going to center it. And the next is for the position in the y direction. And we're going to center that as well. The next two values are for the width and height respectively. And we're going to set both of them to be 512 pixels. The final value is for any flags, but we're just going to keep it simple for now. So we're just going to set it to the default value of 0. Next, we're going to need to determine whether it was successful or not. And to do this, we're going to check if the window pointer is a null pointer. If that's the case, we're going to output an error message to the console and return one to stop the program and indicate that it's been unsuccessful. However, if it's successful, we're going to display the success message. And then we're going to call up the SDL destroy window function to clean up. Let's run the program and see what happens. OK, you might have missed it there. I'll run it again. So it's really hard to see, but the window appears for a split second, then it disappears after that. To make it stay open a bit longer, let's add a delay of 3 seconds. Let's hit run and see what happens. 
See, there we go. The window stayed open for longer, so now we know it's working for sure. The next thing we're going to do is create a renderer. And what that will allow us to do is use the graphics card for hardware accelerated drawing. So similar to the window, we're going to use a pointer of type SDL renderer. We're going to call it renderer. And it's going to call up the SDL create renderer function. The first input is the window. So we're just going to use the window that we just created. The next input is the index of the rendering driver that we want to use. So we're just going to use the default value of minus one to request the first one that supports the flag, so we'll request. And for the last input, we're going to specify the STL render accelerated flag to enable hardware accelerated drawing. Next, we're going to need to determine whether the renderer was created successfully or not. And to do this, we'll check if it's a null pointer. If that's the case, then we'll output an error message to the console and return a value of one. However, if it's successful, then we'll display the success message and then call the SDL destroy render function to clean up. In addition, let's output the name of the renderer to the console. So to do this, we're going to call the SDL get render info function to fill a SDL render info structure with the information about the renderer. Then we're going to output the name contained within the structure to the console. So let's run it and see what happens. There we go. So everything's still working. But in addition, you'll note that we have render equals direct 3D. And this makes a lot of sense. So because I'm on a Windows machine and direct 3D is a popular driver, that's how we know that hardware accelerated rendering is working for sure. So now that we've got the worst of the main.cpp file set up, it's time to start working on the game class. So I'm going to go over to the project, right click, add, class. For the class name, I'm going to call it game, of course. And notice that it's going to create a game.h file and game.cpp file. And here they are, game.h, game.cpp. So I'm just going to quickly pin both of the files. So I'm going to start with constructor, and it's going to have public access, and we'll have two inputs, the window and the renderer. Next, we're going to include SDL. Next, I'm going to go to the .cpp file and add the constructor there as well. Let's start by making sure that both window and render aren't null pointers. From there, let's start the main game loop. How it's going to work is that it's going to keep running while a variable called running is set to true. Of course, there's going to have to be some way to exit the loop. So what we're going to do is check if the window has been closed, and if so, set running to false. To do this, we're going to have to create an SDL event. From there, we're going to create a loop that will pull the events one by one. It's going to call up the SDL pull event function, and the event will be passed by reference to fill it full of the event information. From there, we're going to check the event.type, and if it's SDL quit, we're going to set running to false. So we're going to head back to the main.cpp file, and we're going to start by including the game header. From there, what we're going to do is replace the SDL delay with a constructor that creates an instance of the game class. And we don't really need the success message anymore, so let's get rid of it. Let's build the program and see what happens. Ah, so the window's staying open. And if I click close, then the window closes. It looks like everything's working properly. So let's add some color to the window now. Let's head back to the game.cpp file. Let's start by setting the render's draw color to a dark purple. From there, let's clear the window with that color. Let's make a note for later that when there's other things to draw, like the unit, they'll get drawn here. And the last thing to do is call the STL render present function to send the image to the window. Now let's run the program and see what happens. Perfect, everything looks good. Now it's time to create the train class. 
you've reached the end of the free preview. If you like what you see, buy the course to continue watching.